We are in Ephraim, Utah today, St. Pete County. Ephraim was founded in 1854 and actually was the most important fort in St. Pete County at the time. Due to it being an important fort, it actually drew a diverse crowd, including many Danes. By 1860, Danes were the majority in the area. Uh, many of these Danes went on to actually become bishops. One of these important Danes and bishops was Knut Peterson, who was a Norwegian who actually helped facilitate the treaty with Chief Black Hawk to end the Black Hawk War in the area. The Black Hawk War ended in 1868, and Ephraim has been here ever since. Other little fun facts about Ephraim, it has a Walmart. It's the only one in the county that I'm aware of that has one. Uh, it has a Maverick. You know your city in Utah if you have a Maverick. And it actually is home of Snow College, which is the university in the county. But as far as I know, they don't have a high school. They go down to Manti. Look for that in the Manti video. Uh, the Snow College is actually known for its music program, by the way. They have a good mu music program here. A lot of people come here from out of the state and in the state to study music at Snow College. Let's go run. Knut Peterson Home is the home of one of the most prominent members of the community, Wilford Woodruff. Yeah, say that three times fast, folks. He was a prophet for the LDS Church. Spent some time here while waiting to dedicate the Manti Temple when it was being built. The back room also has a hiding place that they used to hide polygamists that were being persecuted. So fun fact for you there. Who knows who they hide back there now? This is the co-op. It was constructed in the early 1870s and became the official outlet for ZCMI. Anybody remember ZCMI? I bet you my friends in Utah do. ZCMI was a church-run store that basically would ship things. They had a catalog you could ship and they also had like brick and mortar sites uh, that you could buy basically all your supplies. So anyways, ZCMI. Today the co-op houses local crafts and arts for sale. There's also a granary here. For the granary, the Relief Society used the building to feed the hungry. It is now the Central Utah Art Center. And then there's also the Bishop Storehouse. Uh, the Bishop Storehouse was built in 1906. It served as a place to hold donations for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or LDS or Mormons, however you want to refer to them. It is now the home to the Ephraim Lions Club. Rawr. This is Snow College. It's actually quite a nice little campus. Uh, it's named Snow College, maybe because of the copious amount of snow we get? I can't verify that. Don't quote me on that, folks. Originally, uh, the LDS Church set this up as a stake academy, but it wasn't until the church turned it over to the state in 1932 that it became a bona fide two-year college. The growth of Snow College continued to draw the Scandinavian population, which grew to about 90%. Man, that's a lot of Scandinavians. Ephraim now hosts the Scandinavian Festival, which started in 1976 and is the weekend before Memorial Day every year. It's actually quite a fun event. They have like this wife carrying contest. I tried it. It was hard. Um, good time though. This is the old flour mill. There is no notes on this. Hopefully it looks pretty, y'all. Let me know.
We are now looking at the old jail. This squared limestone block building was likely constructed in 1870s or 1880s. We're not sure. Uh, we can maybe carbon date the rocks. Oh wait, that doesn't work that way with buildings. Never mind. The upper floor served as the city hall with a raised front interest and tall plastered ceilings. And the lower floor was the city jail, of course. It had separate front and side entrances for the two iron band jail cells. The front porch has been altered, but otherwise the broadside facing structure is architecturally intact, including six over six windows. I did not know what that was until now and federal style lintel caps. I am definitely not an architect. Uh, the building's now a house and the jail cells in the basement are still there. One is a guest room and the other is a study. So one of those guest rooms might be pretty secure, I guess. Uh, maybe they only call it a guest room, but they use it for other purposes. Who knows? Anyways, overall, uh, yeah, private home now that used to be a set or a jail. We are looking at Anderson Drug. This building is a neo-classical style and was built before 1905. Once again, not exact dates because they're hard to track down. Uh, if you walk inside, you can see the original ceiling and there are two old signs on the back wall. So fun little fact if you go into the Anderson Drug store. This is the Ephraim Hotel. It's a historic Victorian style and it was built in 1914. We found the dates on this one, people. Yay, go us. Uh, I guess you can rent a room here. Either than that, we don't know much more. We are now looking at the Ephraim Social Hall which was built in 1911 by six local businessmen. It is an imposing, see how imposing looking it is? Look at it. Two level, three story tall commercial brick building. The interior capacity is stunning, or so the notes say. We didn't go inside. Originally, the expansive first floor hosted the J.F. Mc, McCafferty. There we are with the first middle initials again. No first names in the 1910s. Uh, J.F. McCafferty General Store in front of the Consolidated Wagon and Machine Company, which was in the rear. There's a grand social hall on the second floor, and that is still intact today with 22-foot high ceilings. Man, that must feel spacious. Tall windows and an enormous dance floor made of maple hardwood. The second floor also contained a ticket or coat room and ladies and gentlemen parlors. The Ephraim Social Hall would come alive in 1911, as the blazing light of a large tungsten lamp reflected in full-length mirrors and live orchestra played for dancers, while spectators sat in the galleries. The building is now owned by Roy Crouch, and the downstairs is a pizza parlor, and the upstairs is still used as a dance hall today, so you can still kind of see it in its glory. Must have been a swinging good time. This is one of many Carnegie Libraries. This one's called the Ephraim Kent Carnegie Library built in 1914 and 1915 and the library is one of 23 Carnegie libraries in Utah. We do actually know of a couple others um, in other cities that we'll be speaking about. There's also 1,650 Carnegie libraries in the U.S. for those that are wondering. All founded by Andrew Carnegie. For those that don't know who he is, he was a rich steel person from Pittsburgh. When I say steel, you know, steel, refinery, whatever. Uh, Carnegie donated the entire cost of the library on the condition that the town provided the land, the books, the librarian, and the maintenance budget. So everything. But buildings cost a lot, so it's still a nice donation. A library program in Ephraim began as early as about 1980 when a group of very ambitious young men established a small library in a rented room in the house of John F. F. Dorius. So this is before 1910, so we can say the first names. The city council took over operation of the library and provided a room in the old city hall until the construction of the library, which was in 1914. We are looking at the Bank of Ephraim. It was organized November 18, 1905. On December 18, 1905, it was officially registered by St. Pete County, and the Utah State Charter was granted for it on December 30, 1905. The work on this building started by attaining the land from J.F. McCafferty. There we are with those first initials again, because it's right around 1910. Told you so. 
and was completed in December of 1907 at a cost of not more than $7,000. Uh, that must have been a lot of money back in the day, though. This is the Town Theater. The Town Theater actually opened back in 1923. It has a balcony, orchestra pit, and dressing rooms. It still actually acts as a movie theater today. Okay, so we end our 5K at the gate on the other side of the Pioneer Parrot Park where we started. So about 0 0.10 miles from our start. Just follow the road back if you happen to follow our, our path. Uh, you should recognize where you're at. But that's Ephraim in 5K. I think we've earned some lunch slash dinner. So join us for food because Ephraim does have places open on Sunday, unlike Centerfield. So we were gonna go to Snow Dragon. Uh, it turns out they have takeout only on Sundays and there's no other mom and pop shots open on Sunday here. So we are eating at Maverick because Maverick has decent food for a gas station. But a couple of recommendations, because we actually come to this town quite a bit, would be Abundance, which is right near, or right at literally the end of the 5K. So if you're not running it on a Sunday, Abundance is great. We recommend Abundance. Also, uh, just down the road is a place called Jose's. Recommend the tacos from there. Fabulous. So try either of those while we go get some good old gas station food. Once again, stay safe, keep pushing.